Welcome to Yarra Bilba. Now the history of Yarra Bilba doesn't begin right here at the main entrance. It actually begins about seven kilometers south of here and about 150 years back in time. The very first Europeans in this area were not farmers, but they were timber getters. They were here to harvest things like red cedar and yellow wood and blood wood and the rainforest that was around. Hang on, it's a bit bright here. So it was their job to harvest all of this wood. It was eventually put onto the rivers, onto the Logan and Albert rivers, and floated out into the bay, loaded onto ships and then sent to Sydney. But it was their efforts clearing the landscape in the 1840s and 1850s that opened up the landscape enough that the farmers who arrived in the late 1850s and 1860s to establish their farms. In 1866, an Irishman by the name of Thomas Plunkett arrived here in Waterford. In fact, he's credited with naming the place Waterford. There is a Waterford in Ireland. But he didn't stay here too long because a couple of years later, he got himself some land further south from here on the Albert River. And that area is just to the south of Yarrabilba and it's integral to the story of Yarrabilba. Now the word Yarrabilba in the Yugambeh dialect of the Bunjalung language means place of song, which is a lovely name. So after hanging around Waterford for a little while, Thomas Plunkett moved further south to this area. The original Plunkett house was down here, somewhere here. I don't think anyone really knows exactly where it was originally, but that was the house that flooded. And it was, it was obvious that you couldn't have a house down there. So they moved up the hill, up this way to that house there. And this here is Plunkett Villa dating to 1869. Thomas Plunkett's land eventually went all the way from the Albert River, which is just over there to the south. His land extended all the way up to Camp Cable Road, and that includes all of Yarrabilba. Huge amount of ground. Beautiful spot here, look at this. Wow. It was a few years after the house was built that a little cemetery was founded on what is now Plunkett Road. We're going to take a look at that now. here is the little cemetery on Plunkett Road and it's actually the second cemetery in this area. The original one was a little bit further away from here, not very far, just over the river on Yore Road. I think it's uh, spelt Y-O-R-E. And the cemetery was set up there but no one was actually buried in there yet and there was a flood in 1874 and Mr Plunkett decided that it was not a good space to have the cemetery so it was moved up here. So this cemetery here dates from what, 1874, 1875. And this section here down in the back corner is the Plunkett family burial corner. And right there is uh, Thomas Plunkett himself, the first, I guess, the first European settler here uh, in this area. So original cemetery and church, your road, flood 74, and the cemetery got moved up here. I wonder where the church went. Was that moved up here? I've got a quick question for you. Yes. The church and the original cemetery, which were down on your road, yes, the, the cemetery got the moved up to here. Yes. Did the church follow or did that go That's straight to tambourine? Straight to tambourine. Ah, okay. Yes. That's there we go. In the late 19th century, if there was a particularly bad drought in the Yarra, Bilba and surrounding areas, the farmers here, the graziers, would take their cattle and herd them from here 
over the ranges, over the mountains, to Hope Island on the northern end of the Gold Coast. There was better grass and better feeding for the cattle over there and they would, uh, they would fatten themselves up at Hope Island. Logan Village Hotel, that means I'm near the beginning of the railway line from Logan Village to Canungra. And the trail, which is now a rail trail, starts just over there. I haven't walked it yet, I'm really looking forward to it. This is actually really nice here at Logan Village. I have been here before, but it's really been well looked after here. The, uh, the parks and the gazebos and walking trail just up ahead there. Beautiful trees, lovely place. As reported in the Courier Mail on the 10th of August 1900, it was tabled in Parliament to build a railway line from Logan Village out to Canungra. In 1915, the railway line was completed. Today it's all gone, but there is a rail trail now from Logan Village to Yarrabilba. And it was also reported in the Courier Mail on that date that there was another case of plague in Brisbane. This was a fellow who got it. He was living on Menzies Street at Petrie Terrace and he died from the plague. Behind me there is Plunkett Road and where I'm standing right now, this used to be the train line from Logan Village all the way out to Canungra. Straight through that way you can see there's a, I'll put the camera up a little bit, you can see kind of a straight line going through the trees there. That's the train line coming right through here, down here and across the road into that property and it's on that property there that Plunkett train station was. Yeah, in 1942, the United States Army was allocated a huge area of land where Yarra Bilba now stands. At first it was called Camp Tambourine, but its name was changed to Camp Cable in honour of Sergeant Gerald O. Cable. He was the first member of the 32nd Infantry Division to die in World War II when the ship he was on was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine off the New South Wales coast. The base was a training and transit camp for US personnel, and at its height there were 35,000 men stationed there. It was one of the largest US training and transit camps in Australia. In 1944 the camp was handed over to the Australian Army, and before long the site was shut down. It lay dormant throughout the rest of the 1940s and 50s, and it wasn't until the 1960s that a new use for the area was begun. This little bit of open green area near the main entrance to Yarra Bilba used to be a park and it was called Camp Cable Park. It was established in 1945, right at the end of World War II, because this area here was the beginning of the American US base Camp Cable. When the camp was decommissioned, this little area here became a roadside park and there were some memorial cans here. When development started here, on the new Yarra Bilba development, those World War II memorial cans were moved to the RSL at Logan Village. And that's where I'm going to go next. They were moved to this site here when the developments at Yarra Bilba were begun. They were moved here for safekeeping. However, they're still here, and I'm thinking it's probably about time that these, these memorials were moved back to Yarra Bilba. In 1965, the Plunkett family sold most of their land north of Plunkett Road 
this is Plunkett Road just here. And the land that they sold is all that out there. That was sold in 1965. In 1966, 1967, this whole area up here became a pine forest plantation. And I just walked into a cobweb. Yeah. And even today around the area, you can still find pine trees growing. There's a little trail just off the track here and there's quite a few going down that way. I'm gonna go and have a look. So Yarra Bilba would have been just like the pine plantations along the Bruce Highway if you go north from Brisbane to the Sunshine Coast. You see all of those uh, pines stretching on forever. This whole area would have looked like that once. And then in the year 2000, a massive fire ripped through the pine plantation here about 700 acres were destroyed. After that, the site fell into disuse. And then in 2010, 2011, the developers moved in to begin the Arabilba housing development. That's when development began. This area here near the main entrance, which is just behind me there, this is the original part of the Arabilba development. This here is Diamond Drive, and at the moment, it's the end of the road. Yarra Bilba will eventually, I guess, take over all of the land that the Plunkett family once owned, all the way from Camp Cable Road down to Plunkett Road in the south. The development on either side of the road, and almost as far as the eye can see. Okay. That'll do. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Many of my viewers watch the videos, but they're not actually currently subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. It does help the channel. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again on my next walk. I'm on 